2, scene 4. Uh, this is a little while after Duncan has been killed. And so the old man and Ross are basically sitting around gossiping about what's been going on since Duncan's murder. Three score and ten I can remember well. Within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Good father, thou seest the heavens, as troubled with man's act, threaten his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is night's predominance or the day's shame that darkness does the face of earth and tomb? when living light should kiss it. All right, so, sorry, I'm eating pizza. Um, so, the old man says, in his 70 years, he's never seen anything as weird as what he's seen, like I said, since Duncan's murder. Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. It is said they eat each other. They did so, to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon it. Here comes the good Macduff, all right, so um, two unnatural, you see that word here, things that happen since Duncan's murder. One is that a falcon was killed by an owl, which so in terms of like who's the predator and who's prey, typically if things were natural, the owl would be the falcon's prey. So the two are flip-flopped. And then we find out that Duncan's horses got out of their stalls and... Um, really awkward and weird, ate each other. So, uh, because murder is an unnatural act, we talked about this in class, nature is reacting unnaturally. So, things are out of whack, things are off kilter, just because murder is not a normal act. How goes the world, sir, now? Why? See you not. Is known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, that day! What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Okay, so... What they talk about now is that, and because Macduff has entered, um, you know, everybody thinks that it's actually the two sons they're suspicious of, um, Malcolm and Donalbane, who bribed or paid the two guards to kill their dad. So everybody still thinks that it was the, the guards, but that they were paid by the two sons and obviously not tricked by um, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. Um, they think that it's weird that right after their father's death, they fled. We know that really they had to flee because... They didn't trust anybody. They were trying to protect themselves. Um, but everybody's gossiping about that. Against nature still. Thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. And tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Okay, so we know that Duncan uh, is at the top. He was king. Right below him was Malcolm. He was the heir to the throne. Below him would be Donalbane. Because those two, the two sons fled and um, were trying to protect themselves, it falls to Macbeth. And so that's what they're saying right here with the sovereignty will fall on Macbeth. Macbeth will be king. Macbeth is Duncan's cousin. So he's literally the next person in line. While these guys are meeting, they have already gone to Scone, to, to, um, which is the ancient Scottish city where kings were crowned, so that he would be uh, crowned king. So it's already happening. Will you to Scone? 
No, cousin. I'll to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's benison go with you, and with those that would make good of bad, and friends of foes. So, um, we find out here something that's really telling about Macduff. He's not going to Scone to see Macbeth crowned, whereas everybody else is going. We talked in class about the fact that this sends a message, or will send a message to Macbeth, that uh, Macduff not only doesn't like Macbeth, but um, doesn't think he's going to be a good king. And what demonstrates that is this quote, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. So Duncan represents the old robes, and Macbeth represents the new. So Macduff thinks that the old robes, Duncan was fit to be king, whereas Macbeth is not. And that's it for scene four. Um, and now we're moving on to um, act three, so that's what's up next. <laughs>